Welcome to the Cups of Consciousness show. I am Alea Dow, your host. I'm a doctor of oriental medicine, a sound healer, the author and founder of the Seven Cups of Consciousness. I have produced nine sound healing albums and have recorded over 2,000 meditations online. I am an energy practitioner and help people shift their consciousness using their energetic fields. And this show is all about using your energetic fields to shift your consciousness as well as exploring energetic concepts that help you create a more empowered and connected life. This episode is an energetic session that explores concepts, energetic practices, and protocols that are similar to a prayer, which help you transform particular aspects of your life. When you listen, recognize that some part of you is using your energetic fields to shift your vibration, which in turn shifts your consciousness, your behaviors, your beliefs, how you react and respond. You might even go into an altered state, so use caution if you're driving or doing something that requires a focused mind. With all of this work that I present, remember that it is your energy shifting you in your own unique way. That way you stay in control and empower with your process. So take a deep breath in. Pull yourself into your line of light and explore your inner terrain in a safe and supported space. Let's dive in. The Covering the Basics class with me, Alea, you and the guides, whenever I bring in information, I always like to create a safe space that supports us as we receive information and possibly vibrationally recalibrate. Today's class is not so much energetic protocols and and a session, but anytime you receive information, some part of you does shift. And so with that, we always want to begin by creating a safe space. We invite you just to take a few deep breaths to use your inhale to pull your energy and awareness into the present breath of now. And just think about your breath of now, pulling yourself into this present breath, pulling your energy out of the future. With the inhale, using the exhale to pull your energy and awareness out of the past. Using the exhale to ground and anchor into the present. And it's just with your intention. You might feel a shift, you might not, but it's just that intention of coming into the breath of now using the inhale and the exhale and beginning the class with that inhale and exhale. I want to talk a little bit about why it's so important to use the breath to pull yourself into the present moment, because only when you're present can you shift. And so sometimes in our life, when we feel really scattered, not clear, we might try to do a protocol or a process or shift ourselves, but we didn't set up correctly. And so we want to think about the setup as, is, are you present? Step one. And I use that inhale to pull my energy and awareness out of the future, to use the exhale to pull my energy and awareness out of the past, to use the exhale again, to anchor into the divine line front of spine. And we're going to talk a little bit about all of the definitions so that you can get the most out of this work. So with that present moment, then the next step is to explore the idea that you have a divine line. It is a river of light and however you perceive, and it might actually be useful for you just to take a moment to think about, are your ears super sensitive? Are your eyes super sensitive? Is your kinesthetic sense really sensitive? Is your sense of smell super sensitive? And so we have the eyes, the ears, the sense, the tactile feeling. We have smell and we have taste. And then we also have another sense, which is like a clear gnosis, like this clear knowing inside you. It just has this incredible resonance where all aspects of you have this profound awareness. And so if your mind is really strong and you just get these intuitive hits and you're just like, I just know it, then you're going to call that clairnosis. But with all of these sensitivities, just take a minute and maybe write down on this, on your paper with a pen, what is your most sensitive sense? And if you say, I don't know, 
which one would be most devastating to lose? Visual, auditory, feeling, not being able to feel, touch, all of them. And just start pondering, what is your most sensitive sense? And that is actually going to give you information about how you receive energetic information, where your intuition is aligned. And you might even start using words like, oh, I just, I sense it, or I hear it, or I see it, or I feel it. So start bringing your language in alignment with your energetic sensitivity. We're going to take a minute now to dive into definitions of the basic terms that I use in the daily cups, the tall cups, energetic protocols, and also in my book, Seven Cups of Consciousness. The very first one I spoke to for just a moment is the divine line. It's a river of light that flows up and down the front of your spine. And you actually have two divine lines. There's the divine line of you, the soul that's riding in the body. And then your body has a divine line that runs through the spine, the spinal cord. We have a little skeleton here. And this is the front of the spine. And on the front of the spine is your divine line, soul rider. And it's actually not that big. It's bigger than a pencil, but you're going to have your divine line firmly attached to the front of the spine. And then the divine line of the body deva actually runs through the spinal cord. It actually is in the spinal cord. And when I had my enlightenment experience in 2001, I very clearly felt this river of light flowing down the front of my spine and actually the energy does flow down the divine line and up. It goes in two different currents, but it's very important to honor your level of awareness, what works for you. So if visualizing or feeling or sensing or perceiving a river of light going in two different directions is confusing and overwhelming to you, drop it, toss it, just let yourself perceive this river of light that flows down the front of the spine, perhaps moving in just one direction. There's no right or wrong with this work. So really honor what works for you. So as you, the soul rider, have this river of light that flows down the front of the spine, we call that the divine line of the soul rider. Then the body, physical human form, has its own divine line that runs through the spine, the spinal cord. And again, its energy, its essence, runs up and down that divine line in the spinal cord. And when I was at Duke University, I was in the cadaver lab and somebody handed me a spinal cord. And I immediately heard my body say to me, that's where my divine line runs. And so after my enlightenment experience, I kept researching and studying and pondering and meditating and exploring and, and tuning in. And I was like, oh my God, that's intense. And I could literally feel an activation actually happening in the divine line of my body, Davis spine, spinal cord. And then with more research, realized that the one thing that does not age in the body is the spinal cord. And so the more that the body is aware of its essence that flows in its divine line, spinal cord, and encourage it, and we encourage as a soul riding in the body, we're the steward, the coach, the guide, the conscious rider, we encourage our body to begin infusing more of its light from its divine line into every cell, organ, meridian, and gland, so that eventually the entire body is the divine line of the body, the physical human form. And then it has the ability to dematerialize, rematerialize, instantaneously manifest all of the cities, instantaneously heal, move itself into a different dimension. So that's part of the body's evolutionary process that we as the conscious soul can start holding space for. So with you, soul rider, your divine line, front of spine, your body, it's divine line that runs through the spine, the spinal cord. We also want to recognize that our team, we have a team presence around us and our team have divine lines that flow in their energetic system. And I'm going to explain who the team are in a little bit. We're going to talk about the soul rider team and the body Davis team. 
But we want to recognize that the divine line that flows on the front of the spine for you, soul rider, your body, your teams is actually what creates your energetic fields. It reflects into the energy fields. And think about the last time you went out, you saw somebody and you might've perceived, wow, they have a lot of light or they don't have a lot of light. That is an indicator of how aware they are consciously or unconsciously of the energy that flows in their divine line, how much they've been working it. And the stronger and the more powerful the energy is in the divine line, the stronger the energy fields are going to be. Same with the body and the teams. So as you are spiritually growing, evolving, using energetic protocols, meditating, I find that the most powerful practice is that inhale, pulling yourself into the divine line. First, you pull yourself into the present moment. Then you use the inhale. You as the soul to pull yourself into your divine line, front of spine, use the exhale to ground. And at first, it's when you first start pulling yourself into your divine line, you might not feel it very much. It might not be a very strong muscle. So it's hard to perceive. So the more that you do it, if you just do it like one time a day, I'm using my inhale to pull myself into my divine line, just that intent using the exhale to ground and anchor into divine line front of sat- saddle it's like your seat the saddle where you ride the stronger your fields are going to get and we're going to also talk a little bit more about more practices that you can do to amplify this energy in the divine line and then as you evolve we want to be very mindful about not micromanaging the body the body will have a hard time it'll have pathology it'll go into unhealthy behavior When you, the soul writer, start thinking that you are the body and you start trying to manage the body's divine line, the body's energy fields, and the body is going to rebel. The body is going to feel not seen, not acknowledged, not heard, like it doesn't matter. And that is where we run into some problems. Also, it can negatively impact the capacity to manifest because the body, you as the soul are trying to manage energy fields you're not calibrated for. So with your body's divine line, you soul rider, your divine line, and then your team and their divine lines, that creates this beautiful energy that can reflect into the energetic fields and it also creates a draw. So with you soul rider, your divine line, you're going to extend it from your spark and we have a spark in the heart of source where we're expressing ourselves from. All of us have a spark in the heart of source. Your body has a spark. You have a spark. Your teams have sparks. Your guides have sparks. Your spiritual family have sparks. And that spark creates this line of light that then creates this divine line. And I actually see that spark creating the divine line that we reference as it comes down through the top of the head, down the front of the spine, out the base chakra. And then for you as a soul, I perceive that it loops back behind you all the way back up to your spark in the heart of source. Your body has a spark in the heart of source that's part of the earth spark, and it might also be part of other sparks as well, depending on your body and its journey, its history. But your body, just to be simple, your body has a spark, and it creates this line that travels down through the top of the head, down the spine, spinal cord, out the base chakra. And if your body feels really aligned with earth, your body will send its divine line out the base chakra into the heart of earth and then loop back up in front of itself. If your body is really aligned with other planets, it might just immediately loop back up and perhaps connect with other planets as a mechanism for grounding. And I talk about that in the galactic hybrid body deva soul rider class master class that I taught a few weeks ago. So this line that comes from the spark loops and then we call that the divine cosmic loop so anytime i'm referring to the divine line i'm simultaneously also referring to the divine cosmic loop sometimes we want to just hold a little bit more awareness on the divine line that runs in the body but recognize that your divine line is part of the divine cosmic loop and it loops for you soul rider for your body and your teams and those loops of light created by the spark, create the flower of life that we exist in. And I'm all about efficiency and also being really simple and sitting in a place of stillness and quiet and calm and neutral. 
And so I've practiced just working this loop of light. And the more you just work your loop of light, the stronger it makes your energy fields, the stronger it makes your flower of life, the sacred geometric shape that you're in, your light body, your etheric fields, you in every single dimension where you're expressing yourself. So the way that the body grounds is through its divine line as we, it sends its energy from the base chakra down perhaps into the heart of earth or loops back up in front of itself to its spark. I have found that some bodies do really, really well with grounding into their sparks in the heart of source. That is a pro, that using that as a primary grounding mechanism, because on some level, everything that's happening for us at our spark level is the only thing that's really real. And everything that's happening at spark level is reflecting here because we want to recognize that the physical dimension is a reflection of all of these other dimensions. And so if we're referencing our spark in the heart of source and recalibrating ourselves and our spark, then it creates a different reflection experience. And that speaks a bit to this sort of the core or the most basic concept of what I talk about. And it's that we recognize that we live in a multidimensional reality. The physical dimension is just one dimension. And then we have all of these other dimensions that I actually perceive are happening simultaneously around us, not so much above us. I talk about imagine a higher dimension or a dimension above you that's harmonic and we're just using that languaging more for the linear mind that we have. But at an energetic level, we have all of these different dimensions happening in the same time space continuum, impacting our experience here. And so when we're in the physical dimension, you can perceive other dimensions above you or around you. Whatever works for you, really honor your process. And years ago, I was in dream time and I asked my guides, how many dimensions are on this planet? And they said 48 other. So that would be like 49 dimensions. And at the same time, we are having dimensional merges and lots of energy is coming in from above. And so when a dimension merges, we might lose a dimension, we might gain a dimension, however you perceive it. And some people get really into the micro detail of it. I'm today in this class, I'm really focusing on just like the basics of we live in a multidimensional reality. When we want to shift our physical dimensional experience, our emotions, our thought forms, our behavior, our body, our chemistry, we want to reference another dimension where our blueprint is being held. Use your higher self, which is the energetic aspect of you. Use the higher self, which is the energetic aspect of your body that exists in this other dimension and your teams to shift that energy. And then you get that ripple reflection here into the physical plane. And there's one other really essential piece to recognize and understand with this multidimensional reality. And that is it's like my favorite phrase right now. When you are in the physical dimension, you have the capacity to make a request for instantaneous actualization, manifestation, transformation in another dimension. So we get so focused on manifesting here in the physical dimension, but play with the idea that we want to take that obsession of manifesting here in the physical dimension and we want to bring it into another dimension where we can instantly, with a request, actualize that which we desire. That's step one. Then step two is awaken to it more, witness it more in that other dimension, which then strengthens it, amplifies it, which then creates the ability for the reflection into the physical plane. And I find that we want to hold the awareness just with our imagination, our intent, our higher selves in that other dimension, witnessing it into being for two minutes until we start to get the ripple. And the stronger your energetic fields, the stronger the ripple. And in all of the work that I do, the master classes, the coaching, 
It's all about bringing your control, bringing your focus, bringing your anchors back to your own divine line so that you have the ability to have really strong energetic fields, energetic muscles in other dimensions in order to shift yourself, your consciousness, your behaviors, your emotions, your thought forms, your reality in the physical plane. So we have the divine line. We have the body, which is a physical human form, and it has a divine line. And you, soul rider, have your own consciousness. Your body has its own consciousness. You, soul rider, have your own energy fields. Your body has its own energy fields that are different than yours. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the team. You, you soul rider, have a team that encircle you, and they have a similar level of consciousness. They have different gifts, wisdom, mastery, and perspectives, but you may have been journeying with your team for many, many incarnations. It's like your crew that you learn, grow, and evolve with. And so you have the ability to use your team to buffer you, support you, positively, empathically impact you, but in a healthy co-creative way. Your team isn't doing anything to you. They're just amplifying supportive qualities inside themselves gathering information and sending information and creating this lovely supportive container. And in today's class, I'm just, again, going over some of these basic concepts, but in some of the coaching and the classes, the master classes, I might do a master class on your team, working with your team, your body Davis team. Um, we go more into the details, but just recognize you have a team. They exist in another dimension they are not ascended masters. You don't want them to be ascended masters. Your guides might be ascended masters, but your team, again, they hold a similar level of consciousness and they're with you 24 seven. The more you acknowledge them, the more you invite them to acknowledge themselves and connect with, connect with themselves, the easier it will be for you to feel your team. Your body also has a team. And years ago, I studied little bits of shamanism. I studied shamanism maybe for four years off and on with different teachers. And in shamanism, they talk about animal totems. And from my perspective, after my enlightenment experience, I realized that my body actually has a team of nature spirits. And I call that the body Davis team. So you might have black bear in front of you and eagle above you and whale behind you and lion to the right of you and hawk to the left of you. So start holding space for your body to explore its team of nature spirits that might be of this world, other worlds, depending on your body's affinity, whether it's a galactic hybrid or just physical human form really bonded with nature. So just start having your body get its team to encircle and you might not even perceive it, but you might feel a little more buffered, a little more supported. So recognize you so rider have a team, your bodies have a team. And then you have guides that, again, exist in other dimensions that are here to support you. They have information. They can hold supportive energies inside themselves. And a lot of the times people ask me the question, how can I get my teams and my guides to support me the most in a healthy co-creative way? Every single day, you could wake up and you could just say, hey, team guides, Hold your most favorite vibration that you have mastery of inside yourself more today. So you're just asking your team, your guides to amplify more of a quality they really value inside themselves. And then they start positively, empathically impacting you. And then you might start holding a more positive, supportive quality that you really value that you might not even realize inside yourself. Your body's going to get positively empathically impacted by your team and your body Davis team and your guides and your body Deva has nature spirit guides. And so we start using these other dimensions as a primary resource to support us as we journey here in this world. And especially as we awaken and evolve, we get really, really sensitive. So when we get really sensitive, as we're awakening, we want to have really strong buffers around us that supports us in our journey. There was a question about, are your ancestors part of your team, you soul rider? No, you don't really want your ancestors on your team, no matter how much you might have loved them or loved them. You don't want your parents part of your team. I have seen actually parents teams 
in people's teams. And then we get empathically impacted by the parents' patterns. And so when we're working with our energetic fields, we can just start encouraging the team. You encourage your team to embrace their essence, honor their own energetic fields, hold strong energetic fields around them. Again, you're using your position in the physical dimension to make a request for your team to hold strong boundaries around themselves, to clear out any being that is not part of the core group that supports your essence, your journey, your body's essence, your body's journey, the two of you together. So when we think about the soul rider being here in the body, and then you've got your physical human form, nature, spirit, body, and then you've got your team, I refer to that as the sacred trinity. And in a lot of the protocols that I do, I use the terminology, we invite you at the level of your higher self, your body, Divas, higher self, your teams, to work with your energetic fields and the guides to do dot, 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 make a request. And I'm going to explain that protocol in just a little bit. But when you want to make a shift in the physical dimension, in your behavior, your beliefs, your thought forms, your emotions, we really want to honor that you're part of a group field. Yes, there is you, the soul riding in the body, but you're in a body and it has its own consciousness, its own patterns, its own needs. And then we've got the team and they have their own history. And so when you invite all aspects of yourself, your body, your teams, this group to shift in the appropriate dimension, there is a pretty profound impact. And over the years, I spent years figuring out what could be a protocol slash prayer that would work within seconds to clear a discordant energy. And I spent hours in meditation and days feeling discordant energies and eventually came up with this formula of, I invite my higher self, body Davis, higher self, team, teams, my team and my body's team to work with the energetic fields and the guides to, and then we bring in an action. And I have found that usually there is a pretty big shift, but in a gentle way, because it's you shifting you. So always tying those protocols into the sacred Trinity. Now, sometimes it might just be your body's challenge. And so then you could say body at the level of your higher self, work with your energetic fields and the guides to release any responsibility that you might be holding that doesn't belong to you. And then you as the soul in your team could also be modeling that of how we return responsibilities that are not ours back to their right and perfect place. So tie in that sacred Trinity component when it feels relevant and appropriate. I talk a little bit about grids and we want to think about grids as lines of light that exist in other dimensions. And these grids that are lines of light that are overlapping They carry vibration, they carry information, they carry consciousness. And we can use grids to craft a particular vibrational fabric around us to help us move into a harmonic dimension. So when we use the grids, just let some energetic aspect of you ask for an appropriate vibrational grid that supports you, that empowers you, that inspires you, whatever it might be, you can infuse particular qualities into these grids in these other dimensions. Your energetic fields are a reflection of what's going on in your divine line, but they are also, they also get impact impacted by ancestral patterns and by empathic sensations. So if you're hanging out with somebody who's really, really happy your energy fields are going to feel their energy fields and their energy fields are going to impact your energy fields. And then you just start to feel this lightness and this joy. Or if you hang out with somebody who's really detail oriented, you might get empathically impacted and start feeling that detail oriented way of being. It's not the way you are, but you're empathically feeling how they are. And it's tied in with like the law of resonance. When we hold a really harmonic vibration, we naturally move to the most harmonic vibration we're exposed to. So with your energy fields, just think 
that when you're around a lower vibration, if you have a really strong harmonic vibration within and around yourself, you're not going to get pulled down into a lower discordant energy. So that actually protects you. If you are not attached and wanting them to be holding a high vibration. And we talk a little bit about that in empathic sensitivity, where when we go into empathic sensations, we might get attached and wanting for other people to be other than they are. And the moment that you get attached for how somebody is, you immediately move into an empathic experience and you start literally processing their stuff, feeling their stuff. Instead of being attached and wanting for other people, the moment you see somebody holding a particular energy that you think might, might maybe could change, shift if for the better, invite some energetic aspect of you, your higher self, your body, Davis, higher self to send appropriate energetic information to them where they have the capacity to receive it to the degree that they choose. Then you're never attached or forcing the information down their throats. Just like, I'm just going to send you information that I might have but I'm not going to be attached to how you are. I'm only attached to my own self. And a few years ago, I taught the Empowered Empath course, and it walks through all of the steps of how to clear empathic sensitivity, why we get empathic. But one of the key pieces to recognize with empathic sensitivity is we typically get empathic because we are attached and wanting for somebody to be different, maybe even meet a need change, grow, value what we value. So we want to start training ourselves to only be attached to the energy that flows in our line, encourage your body to be only attached to the energy that flows in its divine line, and invite your teams to also hold that same stance in the dimensions where they're expressing themselves. So I don't want to go, I don't want to spend time going over the seven cups Um, the seven concepts that I talk to in my book, Seven Cups of Consciousness. I just encourage you to read the Seven Cups of Consciousness. It has these seven concepts that can help shift your reality. And um, let's dive actually into basic protocols, and then we'll dive into questions. How to use your energetic fields and use an energetic protocol in a really powerful way to shift your emotions, your thought forms, your behaviors, possibly even what you draw to you, what you manifest in the physical dimension. And again, step one is always to pull yourself into your divine line using your inhale, pull yourself into the present moment. And whenever we're crafting a protocol, we want to recognize that we're pulling on this, the first concept of the seven cups of consciousness. We live in a multidimensional reality. So you're pulling yourself into your inner river of light, which actually exists in another dimension. It's non-physical. It's energetic, etheric. And you're using something physical to actually help you pull yourself into this etheric place, space. So as you pull yourself into your divine line, with the beginning of a protocol, whenever we want to shift, we have to feel safe. And one of the ways that I create safety is by calling upon ascended masters to encircle guides, advisors, spiritual family, nature spirits, beings that you resonate with to encircle you in another dimension, that first concept, multidimensional reality, to hold a safe space inside themselves to hold safe space for you in a healthy co-creative way. And we do that in the the protocols that I do. We call for the ascended masters to encircle you in this safe and sacred space. And then the second part of a protocol is to use your inhale to pull yourself into your divine line. And then you invite your higher self, body, Davis, higher self teams to connect to your own healing source, your own spiritual power, your divine spark. And it's this vertical hookup. You might even feel a vertical hookup connecting in with your spark. And as soon as you connect in with your spark, you're now able to receive appropriate information from your higher self, from your guides in an empowering way. And then before we craft a protocol, we then call in appropriate sacred geometric shapes, sounds, and light that have the capacity to support you. And you can bring in whatever intentions feel appropriate for you at the time. And so that's the setup, the beginning of a protocol. 
And then we go into the detail of, okay, what's the action of the protocol? Before you begin the protocol, you want to ponder, what is it you want to shift inside yourself or in your outer world? Because whatever's happening in your outer world is usually happening in the inner world. And I'm just going to think about something really simple. We have reference points and they're like little places where we energetically go to see where we can get our needs met. And we also have anchors. And one of my favorite like daily practices is inviting your higher self, your body to this higher self, your teams to work with the energetic fields and the guides to retrieve all of your reference points and your anchors off of everyone and everything and back to your own divine line. And so just take a moment to repeat after me. I invite the higher self of me, my body, and teams to work with the energetic fields and the guides or just to work with the energetic fields to reference, locate, reference all of our reference points and anchors that we have placed externally. And when I say we, that means you, your body, your teams, and you're repeating after me. So you're saying to your own self that we have placed externally. So now some energetic aspect of you is using your energy fields, your body's using its energy fields, your team are using their energy fields to locate all of those reference points for all of your needs, all of your anchors, and retrieving them. And then repeat after me. We invite the higher self of me, my body, and teams to work with the energetic fields, to retrieve all of our anchors and reference points off of everyone and everything back to our own divine lines. Now you are referencing yourself internally. You are holding your anchors internally, which moves you into a more connected state. It also decreases empathic sensitivity. Because wherever you're holding your anchors or your reference points, you're going to energetically feel wherever that may be, the people in that space, the people that you might have your reference points for your needs on. So it's a simple protocol that can start bringing all of your anchors back to your line, all of your reference points. And I'm just going to recap it again in your own language that you would use for your own self. I invite the higher self of me, my body, and teams to work with the energetic fields and the guides to to locate and retrieve all of our reference points and anchors off of everyone and everything and back to our own divine lines to clean them, recalibrate them in a way that supports us, empowers us moves us into greater alignment with our essence, our wisdom, and mastery. And so you could write that down, and I'll also transcribe it as well. And that could just be a protocol that you do every day. And then after a protocol, after an action, you can oh, you always want to update your reference points. points. It's like resetting your fuel gauge for this different vibrational way of being. And the way that you do that is you say, I ask that all of my reference points are updated, all ways in which I perceive and are perceived in all realms where I'm expressing myself or where we are expressing ourselves. The we refers to you, Soul Rider, your body and your teams. So you're updating your reference points. And then you might feel a little lighter, a little more expanded, a little more grounded, a little more centered. The the shifts are subtle. We want them to be subtle. And remember, always, it's your energy fields shifting you. So start playing with the energetic protocols of, I invite the higher self of me and my body and teams to work with the energetic fields and the guides too. 
and then ponder the action. Do you want to release responsibility that you've been holding, retrieve responsibility for your needs off of everyone and everything, hold your anchors in your line, retrieve your creative current. I recommend doing one action per protocol initially until you get your energy fields get stronger, you get clearer on your focus and your process. Aho. So we're going to shift gears. I know that was a lot of information and we're going to go into questions and answers. And I'm just going to take a minute to see if there's any other um, questions. And I have tons of classes <clears throat> on lots of different topics, not so much grids, but I could cover that in like a coaching session. I'd like to know about the altered state. Okay, good. Okay, good, Carolyn. I'm just going to kind of dive into these and we're going to take the next 15, 20 minutes to answer them. We're diving into questions and answers, and there's lots of questions um, that I want to speak to you today that people have asked. And somebody asked a question about when they listen to energetic protocols, tall cups, maybe even daily cups they move into an altered state and you actually might feel like you drift off or you get super spacey. And that's actually really good because what's happening is your conscious awareness is being re-diverted into a different dimension, into a higher dimension, a more harmonic dimension. And now you're utilizing your energy in this other dimension, shifting, changing the vibration in your energetic fields. And so you, you fall asleep or you feel like you've dropped into an altered state or kind of like spacey, not really asleep, but just in this other place. And it's your energy fields doing the work in this other dimension. At first, it's really disorienting. But remember that the more you do this work, the stronger your energy fields and actually the less sleepy you'll get. And when I first started doing energetic protocols with myself for the first three years, I actually fell asleep in the middle of everything, every single protocol, because my energy would re-divert, go into the energy fields, do the work, then re-divert again. And I'd wake back up and I'd feel the shift. So let yourself go into that altered state, that spacey, you're just accessing another dimension. The more you do it, the stronger you'll, you'll get with it. It's just a slow muscle that you want to build, work on building. There was a question about guides and do your guides come and go? Are they the same? Do they change over time, depending on where you are in your journey, your chapter? And I perceive that guides actually do shift depending on your journey and what you're focused on. So if you're in a really challenging time, you might actually want to call upon the guides that can help you through this challenging situation. If you're a healer or a therapist or a teacher, or a different profession, you could actually call upon guides that have mastery of your profession, your creative expression to help you positively, empathically impact you, help you gather appropriate information that helps you level up whatever it is you're doing. So you can call upon new guides. New guides will come in depending on the situation that you're in. You might have like everybody's different. You might have a, a sense of just a guide that's with you your whole life. So really honor your own sense of what is your journey with the guides that you are working with. <clears throat> and now I'm just going to take a minute and look at um, questions that people shared prior to class. And Give me one second. Okay, there. There was a question about the divine line. And somebody said that when they bring their awareness into their divine line, they feel super busy, buzzy. They get physically agitated and, re and restless and ask the higher self to turn down the intensity, but that that doesn't seem to help. And so when you begin practicing pulling your energy and awareness into your divine line, even if you've been doing it for, for years and you still feel this agitated energy, 
what you could do is you could bring your awareness up to your spark and you could ask for your spark, you at the level of your spark self, to activate a stronger current of calm, of centeredness, of quiet, of stillness, and radiate that calm centered energy from your spark down your divine line. And then as you have that calm flowing in your divine line, using a protocol to do it, if you wish, then you soul rider would want to use your higher self to appropriately attach yourself to the front of the spine. And the actual protocol that that is would be, I invite the higher self of me soul rider to work with my energetic fields and the guides, or just to work with my energetic fields to appropriately and firmly attach my divine line to the front of my body's spine in a way that supports and soothes me and my body. And then you let go, you let your energetic fields do the work because that restlessness might not might be coming from you soul writer holding your energy and awareness in your divine line and you're not firmly anchored on the front of the spine so it's almost like feels too electrical for your body. And then the other layer to bring in is to have you soul rider run your energy in your entire divine cosmic loop because there is a really important piece to remember with this work the more evolved you get the more intense you become so you want to start equally distributing your light your energy in your entire divine cosmic loop not holding all of your energy just in your divine line on the front of the spine that's going to blow out the body it's going to crash the endocrine system it's going to make your body feel super buzzy, super ungrounded, jacked up, not good. So protocol, I invite the high, my higher self, me soul rider, to work with my energetic fields and the guides to equally distribute my light in my individual divine cosmic loop. And then you just visualize, just imagine, just hold space, like let go for this light to be equally distributed in your entire divine cosmic loop, snuggling appropriately up on front of spine and see if that helps shift the buzzy. Okay, I'm looking at the next question. There was another question about what does self-love feel like? And that is such a critical piece because self-love is essential in our growth and our evolution as we awaken. And when I think about self-love, I actually think of it like a quality. What is a quality that you have inside yourself that you value? And so just take a minute right now. And if somebody was to use a positive word to describe you, what positive word would they use? Strong, courageous, joyful, kind. And so whatever that word is, or you might feel inside yourself, oh, I really value that I am kind or that I am gentle or that I am patient. And then you would directly link that quality. Imagine a river, a thread, a current of that vibration flowing in your divine line, soul rider, invite your body to feel that same current in its divine line. Your body might have it as well. You can invite your teams to also feel that current inside themselves to the degree that's appropriate for them. And then you're starting to feel this quality that flows within you that you've actually taken many, many moments to attain. And you start linking your sense of self-worth in direct connection with that quality. You start valuing it more, appreciating it more, respecting it more, honoring it more, being in gratitude for it more. And when you do that, that creates self-love. So it's a very simple practice of, oh, what if my heart wasn't kind? Oh God, that'd be horrible. I'd be so mean. I'd feel so angry and, and mean inside. Oh my God, I really love this kindness that flows in my core. I can feel a little bit that kindness, almost like a river that flows down front of spine, maybe in the spine too of the body. So start just doing that tiny little micro practice every single day of feeling into a quality that flows within you that you value. And that starts to create this plume of self-love. Oh, good question. 
Okay. What are some practices to apply when I perceive I am trying too hard and frustration moves in? There's a question of what happens if I'm trying too hard and I have all these practices and then I start to get frustrated. What would be a remedy? And with that, the moment we go into frustration, remember we it's the fifth fourth concept in the seven cups. We do the opposite of that which we're intending on mastering until we reach a certain level of conscious awareness and we begin to practice that which we intend to master. So frustration, the opposite would be patience and maybe even self-acceptance of like, you know what? What if right now in this very moment, I'm enough. I don't have to change. I don't have to be more evolved. How could I just be an acceptance of what is right now? Because what we resist persists. And so sometimes we have to just take a micro moment and embrace what's going on and just be like, why, why might I be in this energy? How is it somehow serving me? How could I be patient with myself right now? How could I just be in a place of gentleness and compassion with myself right now? So the moment you start to push too hard, overwork, pause and go, and what if what's really being asked for right now is to just be gentle and patient and kind with myself? How could I do that? So bring that languaging in if it resonates. When you start to get overwhelmed, you feel like you're pushing yourself too hard and you get frustrated. There was a question from somebody that got a little confused in my languaging when I'm in the daily cups, even the tall cups, energetic protocols. And when I start the daily cups and I say, we, we invite you at the level of your higher self, body, Davis, higher self and teams to do dot, dot, dot. When I'm using the word, we, I'm basically like your coach. So this morning I was working out with my trainer and she said, "Um, I'm going to invite you to raise your hands up to the sky. And she could have said, she said, I, but if she was acknowledging her as the soul and the body and the teams, then she would say, well, we, meaning her, her body and teams are inviting me, my body and teams to raise the arms up to the sky. And so when I use that protocol of we, I'm essentially saying me, Alea, soul rider, my body and my teams and the guides and advisors that I'm working with, we invite you to Use your higher self, your body, Davis, higher self, your teams to work with your energetic fields and the guides to activate a stronger current of dot, dot, dot in your individual divine cosmic loop. And a lot of the times in the protocols, I simplify it and I say in your individual divine cosmic loop, sometimes I'll say for you, soul rider, that means you, the soul riding for your body and for your teams. So I can dive deeper into that perhaps in a coaching of how we unpack those layers of the protocols. But when you're doing your own protocol for your own self, I recommend that you would say, I invite my higher self, me soul rider. I invite my body at the level of its higher self to work with its energetic fields. I invite my teams to work with their energetic fields and the guides to use our energy fields to do something, to bring in an action. So start playing with it, crafting the protocols in a way that works and makes sense to you. And if you hear a protocol from me and you're like, I don't really understand what she's saying, just recognize I'm just walking you through a process. I'm not doing anything to you. I'm just guiding you like you could raise your arms up to the sky and then you could squat down and then you could take a deep breath in you, your body and your teams. So hopefully that clarifies the whole process of crafting protocols. There might be a couple other layers there too. And I'm just looking at other questions. Okay, good. I answered that, answered that. Okay. So I'm going to come into chat. When you're doing an energetic protocol, how to keep your mind out of the space. Think about using your mind, your thoughts, your words, silent or out loud, simply as a request and an invitation to this energetic aspect of you. 
And the visual that I am going to share with you that might help keeping your mind out of it is imagine that your higher self, your energy fields, your higher self is connected in with your energetic fields, your higher self uses your energy fields. You make a request to your higher self that uses its ener- your energy fields. And when you make a request, you then have to let go. So imagine being at a restaurant and making a request for something to order. They're like, I would like some lemonade, please. And then you keep holding on to the waiter's pant leg and you don't let the waiter go. You're trying to use your mind or you might even like follow the waiter back into the kitchen and be like, are you going to get my lemonade? Because I want my lemonade. We're using our mind to keep our awareness on the process. And we actually want to let go of the waiter's pant leg. And we just want to say, I'm inviting my higher self to activate a stronger current of calm in my divine cosmic loop. And then you take a deep breath and you're like, I'm sure my higher self is on it. I'm sure my higher self is using its energetic, my energetic fields to activate a stronger current of calm. So you just have this intent of letting go, using your mind to be in the focused place of letting go to let some other energetic part of you do that work. Um, Let's take one more question on tunnel of light. And um, I did do a video about the tunnel of light, but kind of how it's different. The tunnel of light is one other term that I talk about. And the tunnel of light actually inserts at the back of the neck. So you have your divine line, soul rider, your body, Davis divine line, but then we have this tunnel of light. And again, from my experience and my, um, my perspective, the tunnel of light is actually how the soul comes into the body. It's also how we get energetic information from our higher self and our body, Davis, higher self. It's like a USB port. And so with that tunnel of light inserting at the back of the neck comes in and gives you information. You want your tunnel of light to be clean, to be firmly attached to the back of the neck, to have a clean uh, top, protected top, and that will also help the neck and the shoulders. So I'll start bringing in more energetic protocols in the daily cups and maybe in the coaching sessions of energetic practices that you can use to really utilize your tunnel of light, keep your tunnel of light clean and clear. And I remember right after my enlightenment experience in 2001, for about six months, maybe eight months, I felt, a, or two years, yeah, it was longer than that, two years, I felt a cool breeze coming down the back of my neck all the time. And then I acclimatized to it, got used to it but I still feel like an openness and sometimes like a gentle breeze. So you want your tunnel of light open because that's an indicator that name that it's an indicator that energetically you are able to receive energetic information from your higher self, from your body, Davis, higher self in a way that supports you in your recalibration. And again, I'll bring in some daily cups and also in coaching sessions, we'll dive deeper into the tunnel of light. And the tunnel of light can absolutely help with integration. Um, I do have a YouTube channel and I have like over 300 videos, uh, energetic processes that you can explore that might help you in your journey. We have lots of master classes that are happening that can help you an empowered empath course that I did. And if you're not getting the daily cups, you're more than welcome to gift the daily cups, a month of daily cups and tall cups to anyone and gift yourself with a month of daily cups and tall cups to anyone. Thank you all so much for joining me. And whenever we complete, we always want to do a little wrap up balancing and stabilizing. So taking a deep breath in, moving into a place of completion, use your inhale to pull yourself into that inner river of light front of spine. Use the exhale to ground and anchor into that inner river. And then just take a moment to invite some energetic aspect of you to balance and stabilize your fields. For you, your body, your teams. And then intend wrapping yourself in sheets of rainbow light, gently sealing these vibrations in to whatever degree is appropriate for your spiritual evolutionary state. We, meaning me, my body and teams are in deep gratitude to be of service to you in this way. 
We're in deep gratitude to the angelic realm, to the ascended masters, and to you and your courage for shifting, growing, awakening, evolving, moving into more harmonic vibration, and modeling that as you move in the world. Let it be so. Aho. You have been listening to the Cups of Consciousness show with me, Alea Dow. Receive a free month of the Cups of Consciousness. Go to sevencupsofconsciousness.com. When you get your free month, you will get five cups a week for four weeks. You'll also receive access to a live tall cup of consciousness session. Feel free to review the show. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Aho.